Yo, what is good up guys? Welcome back. In this video, I want to fix this weird bug where we are automatically aiming down the sight when we are not even holding the right trigger. So let's go ahead and step through why this is happening. So if I just close all that down, go back to, if I navigate to content assets and come into the retarget folder and open up the base anim layer BP, and we open up this item anim layers base, double click that, uh, the node that's really really driving the actual aiming of the site to the middle of the screen is this transform modify bone node here. You can see here, if we go in, type in zero right here into that alpha and we press play, you'll see now we're in the idle state as if nothing happened. So we need to have a driving force that actually populates the data inside that alpha value when we start aiming. So let's go ahead and work on that. I'm going to jump into the code because we need to create some functions for when the player starts actually aiming down sight. So let's go into the liar anim base dot H and we need some private variables that we want to use internally. So I want to use just one variable, I believe a bool, and this is going to be B insert aiming. So if this is ever true, we're going to start interpolating our aim alpha, which is a value that we're going to make a blueprint readable property here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come underneath this transform. Let's make a, a float and call this aim alpha. Set this equal to zero. I also want to create a Boolean that we are going to set internally and realistically it could be another private variable. So this is going to be bool b is aiming. Set this equal to false by the fault. And now what we need is a blueprint callable function, a function that we want to call from our ability that actually drives the aiming. So let's say blueprint callable category procedure ik and we want to say void set is aiming and when the bool b is aiming comes through as a parameter and let's just go ahead and create a definition of this so inside of this function we want to set is aiming b is aiming it's equal to and this this function this uh parameter needs to be changed so i'm gonna call this in uh, and i'm gonna just call it new aiming and also change this one just so it's the same new aiming. Let's just uh, double click, copy that and paste here. We want to set our private variable B is aiming to new aiming. And then we also want to set B interp aiming equal to true. But we only want to do this if the value coming in is not already true. So what we can do is wrap this in an if statement. So if our B is aiming is not equal to new aiming then we want to set b is aiming equal to new aiming and we also want to set b interp aiming equal to true so this will go ahead and trigger the interpolation of our aiming which we need to write that function as well so this is going to be a private function we can actually put it in protected it's fine we can say void interp aiming this is going to take in a delta time. I'm going to create a definition of that. And inside of here, we want to set our aim alpha equal to a uh, F interp to. So it's basically a float, float interpolation. And the current value is the aim alpha. The target is B is aiming. And this will take B is aiming since a Boolean is basically a, a zero or one value. If this is true, the target will be one. If it's false, the target will be zero. And basically that's what we're deciding here. If B is aiming is true, we set the target to one. If not, we set it to zero. We can also do this. You can also pass it in just as a, a Boolean itself. This will automatically convert this to the, the numeric value. Uh, and then we want to pass in delta time as the delta time and interp speed. 
technically, if you're making your own game and you're trying to have some modularity, you want this to be a parameter that you will pass in. Each weapon will have its own aiming speed because basically this is the aim down sight speed. So if you think about Call of Duty, where they have like when you put a certain stock on a weapon and it increases the aim down sight speed, that is basically this value right here. So that stock would alter this value. It would add to this value because the higher this value is, the faster it is, the lower, the slower, pretty much. So yeah, uh, you probably want to make this parameter, but I'm going to set this to 15. That's what uh, is a good number. And then we want to, to do a check here if our aim alpha is greater than or equal to one. So greater than or equal to one or if our aim alpha is less than or equal to zero. If I could type today. If that's the case, we want to go ahead and set B, interp aiming equal to false. Now I'm gonna put the 1.0F here so that it's a float. So this will go ahead and interpolate our aim alpha value and then we'll actually use this aim alpha value uh, in place of here, we'll pass it into right here. So back to here, we actually need to set up the location of where this function is going to fire. So basically on tick, we want to always be checking if B interp aiming is true. So let's go to our native tick function. Where is it? It is initialize and update animation. So up here, if and we should do this after we have access to the character. We'll do it after all of this basic stuff that Lyra already does. So if we have a true value coming through for this B interp aiming, then we want to go ahead and call interp aiming and pass in delta seconds here. And this will go ahead and handle for when we actually press our key and we call the blueprint callable function set is aiming. This will go ahead and start the chain. So set is aiming will depending on what we pass through, we'll go ahead and set B is aiming to true. And it will also go ahead and set our interp aiming to true. If interp aiming is true, it'll fire that native update and it'll start interpreting our, uh, interpolating our aiming uh, value, which is our aim alpha. And once our aim alpha goes to its max or to its minimum, we go ahead and change B interp aiming back to false. So let's go ahead and do a recompile here. Okay, so we went ahead and we compiled that. We got a successful compile. It looked like it said that there was an error somewhere. What does that say? Feature pack error and feature pack, feature packs virtual. Um, that's not pertaining to us. So yeah, that compiled successfully, no errors. And let's go ahead and navigate to our content assets. Let's go to that retarget folder, go to base anim layer and get this layer anim base uh, open up so we can pass in our aim alpha to this puppy here. So. We'll just drag off of this and grab our aim alpha. And we will go ahead and use this as the alpha instead. And now one last thing, we need to navigate to our ADS uh, ability. So if you press control P anywhere in, in Unreal Engine, you'll bring up this, this quick search. And I want to search GA underscore ADS. One thing I should teach you guys is how to navigate in unreal peer like how to find things in unreal i get a lot of questions in my discord does anybody know where this is does anybody know where this is and realistically all you have to do is just use this there's so many search tools fuzzy search tools inside of unreal it's 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 actually crazy they have filters they have fuzzy search you can just type in like a keyword it'll bring up everything with that keyword and so on and so forth let me let me focus up though so pretty much here we're we're um when we ADS, we swap to an ADS camera. So right now, this is the third person ADS. I need to edit this first off because this curve is still taking us a little bit to the left. So this value is negative 75. And this value is 60 right here. So this value right here needs to be zero so that we center up. And then for us, we want to set this to zero as well so that we actually aim in and I'll save that. Let's go back in here. And after we do all of this with the walk speed, which technically 
since we're not using max walk speed, this doesn't work and we'll fix all this stuff in the next video. But right now, I just want to fix the, the bug that we are actually focused on right now. So once we get past this spot right here, we can actually start doing some local stuff. So you see here is it's action if we are locally controlled. So what I want to do is go ahead and get my Lyra character. And then I want to grab the first person mesh off of that, get the first person mesh. And from there, I want to grab my anim instance. So get anim instance and cast it to my Lyra anim instance. And in your project, you would want to do something like this in an interface because it's going to get a lot deeper. You're not just going to be doing one function out of your um, out of your anim instance. You're going to probably be using a, a, a few functions and you want to cast to your anim instance every time when you know if your anim instance implements a certain interface, you can just call that interface function. But for right now, we're going to do this nice and dirty. Um, like I said, I'm trying to keep this, this, this system just under 10 videos, really, so that we can get, get through with this series here. So after we cast here and it's successful, we want to actually call set is aiming on this. And we'll set this to true because we are now currently aiming. And then I am going to copy this here. And you can see why I use a interface because um, doing this like this is pretty trash. I, it cuts out one whole node pretty much. Um, so we'll pass this here and we'll grab that and hook it up. And instead of setting aiming to true, we'll set it to false. And if we compile this and jump in the editor, we should have a successful ADS. Yeah, that's beautiful. So we're now perfectly aiming down sight and we're only aiming down sight when we hit our ADS key. So um, in the next video, we're going to continue with the bug squashing. So if you guys are ready for that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.